Howdy everybody, welcome back to the Let's Play, and today guys, we are working on our Lytra course. So we got our string from our Quintuple Cave Spider Spawner, which we worked on last episode. Got a whole bunch of other resources, including some redstone, some redstone lamps, etc., some droppers, things like that we we're going to need for the Lytra course. Uh, so let's go ahead and get on out there, and we'll start to work on it. Alright guys, so I found a good spot over here. So here is the platform we jump off of, and the most recent... Uh, module here is, let's see, the one, two, three, fourth one over. And this is the point where we're going to be turning back around. So it's going to be like we come over here, we're turning here, and then we come over this way like this. So we're going to be turning left uh, from this checkpoint on. And then from here, I think we're going to have a little bit of a, like a straight decline, slight incline, and then we'll start to deal with the mountains over there. So I think that's a, a good plan. Uh, in the meantime, though, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a time lapse here and talk a little bit about the spacecraft Juno. Uh, which recently arrived into orbit around Jupiter. Uh, it's a pretty cool NASA mission uh, that many of you guys might not have heard of because it was uh, the big the big moment when it went into orbit around Jupiter was actually July 4th night when probably a lot of people were out shooting off fireworks and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's a huge technical achievement, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about that. All right, guys, so welcome to Jupiter. And we are actually flying alongside the Juno spacecraft right now. Uh, this is actually a very realistic real-time simulation that can be found uh, in the description if you guys want to check this out. But this is basically an exact representation of where Juno is right now in space relative to the Jovian system, which is Jupiter and its surrounding moons. Um, so you can, if we go over here, you know, we can uh, we zoom out, let's just say. We can see how small Juno is compared to Jupiter. Jupiter and its Galilean moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Uh, but I want to sort of walk you through the Juno spacecraft and sort of uh, yeah, let you know like what is what on this spacecraft and what each component does. So basically these giant uh, panels here, these are solar panels. Uh, Juno is actually the furthest or the most distant ever solar powered spacecraft. Uh, we have sent other spacecraft further into the, uh, the cosmos, but nothing that ran on solar power. A lot of the... Voyager probes, for instance, ran on nuclear power, but this thing actually runs on solar panels. Uh, to give you a sense of scale, it's about 65 feet from one tip here to this tip here. Uh, it's about 20 meters or so for those of you guys who are uh, in the uh, non-US uh, demographic. But basically we need these huge solar panels here because there's about 25 times less light uh, hitting these solar panels than at earth because of the inverse square law for for light um, so basically the sun is a lot dimmer out at jupiter is essentially why we need all those solar panels uh, let's see the next instruments uh this is the antenna right here this big round thing looks kind of like a flying saucer um this is the antenna right here to transmit stuff back to earth and then this weird sort of uh pointy thing over on the end here this is actually what measures jupiter's magnetic field so the thing that actually measures Jupiter's magnetic field is called the magnetometer. Uh, this is actually the magne magnetometer boom arm. And basically what this will do is it will allow us to very accurately map the magnetic field of Jupiter, which is right over there. And yeah, essentially this will allow us to better understand basically what creates the magnetic field inside of Jupiter. The other instrument I want to show you guys on this spacecraft is the microwave radiometer. And it's actually this square looking thing right here. And basically what this does is it's going to map Jupiter's clouds at different depths. So this big panel here actually measures the lowest energy waves. So it basically measures the temperature of the, the clouds of Jupiter. And there's a bunch of different uh, sizes of these antennas on the spacecraft. That's the biggest one, which measures the lowest energy. And then there's, you see these small squares here. These also measure uh, higher energy waves coming from different cloud layers. So that is actually, as we're spinning around here, these things here are actually what are going to measure the temperature and other properties of the clouds at different depths on Jupiter. And I hope it's obvious that there are some other experiments and detectors on here, including the waves instrument right there, which is that little uh, antenna you see right there. There's also the Jedi and Jade high energy particle detectors, as well as cameras and a bunch of other sensors and detectors. So anyway, now that we know a little bit about the spacecraft, let's talk about why we sent it to Jupiter and what questions we hope to have answered. So the primary goal of the Juno mission is to determine the evolution, formation, and the structure of Jupiter. And basically this is important for a couple different reasons. Um, 
Number one, the evolution of Jupiter is very important because right now our current understanding of solar systems and how they form is wrong. It's not a, if a question of if they're wrong, it's a question of to what degree is it wrong. Um, and the reason we know it's wrong is because in our solar system we see four terrestrial planets close to the sun. So we got Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars close to the sun. And then we have the four giant planets, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, that are quite far from the sun. And as far as we know, that's how it should always be, because uh, basically the sun blows, when it starts to shine, it blows away the gas and other, um, other volatile elements in the, uh, the inner solar system. And those basically recondense out past, um, you know, asteroid belt distances in our solar system uh, into, you know, the gaseous giants. Um, now, in other star systems, we don't see this. So that's how we know it's wrong. Uh, basically, we see giant gas planets pretty much directly next to their parent star, which is very strange because, as far as we know, that shouldn't really happen. And we want to know why that didn't happen in our solar system. So basically, did Jupiter form where it's at currently, or did it migrate outwards? That's what we're trying to answer with Juno. And one way we, we will determine that is by measuring the abundance of water in Jupiter's atmosphere. Um, so... By measuring the amount of water in Jupiter's atmosphere very precisely, we'll, we'll potentially be able to make a uh, reasonable assessment of where Jupiter formed, how it formed, and why it formed. And we'll also be able to precisely map Jupiter's magnetic field, its gravitational field, uh, and uh, more accurately map its mass, although we already know that fairly well. Um, and that will also help to determine um, the interior structure of Jupiter uh, and whether it has either a solid core uh, like an actual uh, rock, rocky planet at the center, surrounded by all the gaseous ammonia and methane, or if it is actually um, just all gas all the way through uh, to the core of presumably metallic hydrogen. Um, so that'll be also very important in determining how Jupiter uh, evolved and how the solar system formed. Juno's orbit is also a polar orbit. Uh, partially this is because of it being a solar-powered spacecraft, and... Because it's solar powered and it's over five times away, uh, further away from the sun than Earth is, you'd want it in a polar orbit so that it's constantly facing the sun, i.e. never in Jupiter's shadow. But because it's in this polar orbit, it's actually going to be able to observe Jupiter's north and south pole uh, directly. So it'll actually give us a good shot into uh, Jupiter's uh, aurora and basically how um, high energy particles interact with uh, very intense magnetic fields. So that will be very interesting to see. And in addition, it's also going to be mapping uh, Jupiter's clouds and the temperatures of those clouds you can see here in this animation. Uh, so we'll be mapping those, determining the composition of those, and how uh, the clouds and storms interact with one another on Jupiter itself. And finally, here's an animation on all of the orbits that Juno will be doing around Jupiter in the next two or so years that it will be orbiting Jupiter. After two years or so, it's actually going to be deorbited and basically crash and burn up in Jupiter's atmosphere. But before then, hopefully it'll gather enough data to help answer some of the questions I posed today, uh, and also help give us a more fundamental understanding of how the solar system formed, uh, as well as other fundamental questions about Jupiter. So I'll provide a link in the description to other channels which you guys can go to to learn more about Juno and the instruments involved in making these measurements and helping us to answer these questions. Uh, so again, links will be in the description to that if you guys are interested. But let's go ahead and get back to the episode. So that's a little bit about the Juno mission there, guys. And yeah, we got a little bit of progress done here. We got, let's see, one, two, three. There's a fourth one you can't see. Five, six, seven, eight done. And the plan is to have 14 of these, so we're a little bit over halfway done here. And I've tested this out. You go quite fast in this section right here where you see these coming down uh, in quick succession. Then you pop back up to this one. This one is actually higher than the previous one. And then we're going to have it come out this way and then gradually um, sort of, you know, drift over this plane in a big wide curve. And then go underneath this mountain, like through this mountain. There's a gap on the other side we'll, we'll shoot through. And then down the valley. Um this valley right here, and then around. Uh, so that is the plan, that is the, the plan course here. Uh, and by the way, the meteor looks pretty freaking awesome from down here, I gotta say. Uh, from this angle, it looks really, really good, and it has like an orange tint with the smoke. Looks cool, looks cool. Uh, anyways, yeah, let's go ahead and keep on working on this, and see if we can get this second half done right here. 
All right, guys, so we got our first Elytra course route now complete, and everything is all set and ready to go, I believe. Um, so, yeah, you can see the course uh, right here above us, sort of floating in midair. And I gotta say, the thing I like most about this course is that it doesn't have a huge impact on the landscape. At least you can't tell that I've done anything here, because there's no, you know, connections to the ground, which is pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. That's how I like it. Very, very hidden and compact, or as, as hidden and compact as it can be. Um, so let's go ahead and get up to the top here. I'll show you the route from above. Just go straight up here, I guess. Not quite high enough, but basically what we do, we're going to be coming over this way. Uh, we dip down here, come back up, make a big turn here. This is a, a rather steep part right here, and then you come back up to this point. Uh, and then from here, you sort of make a big, wide, sweeping curve out over the, uh, the plains here. And then come back through here, uh, through the extreme hills, down under this land bridge, and then back up um, to the to the start, to the to the end, basically. So that's the route. Let's go ahead and get up here and let's let's run this thing. Need a couple more boosts. Yeah, a couple more boosts here. Come on now. Come on now. There we go. Got it. Sweet. And this whole thing can can be run without uh, bow boosting. So you don't have to uh, shoot yourself or anything. You can do it all with just just gliding. And I think there's 15 total um, checkpoints here. You can see some of them right here. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and try this out here without any bow boost, uh, if possible. I'm just gonna keep my bow on my hop bar just in case because there is some tricky parts, especially that that part where it goes down uh, quite steep. But here we go. I'm gonna give this a shot. So, uh, it should keep score for us, and all these things, all the lamps on top should light up when we go through this. And we should also hear a ding sound. So, here we go. Three, two, one, and we're off. Alright, so we gotta keep our momentum through this first one. There's one, two, gonna make it. Yep, three. Barely made that, though. <laughs> Four, okay, so far so good. And then the hard part. Five, six... Oh, nope, didn't make it, didn't make it. Alright, we got a boost. Maybe. <laughs> so we missed we missed two there. Let's see if we can get back up here for these. There we go. Okay, we're gonna make this one. Nope, we missed that one too. Dang, I'm missing all of them. I'm just gonna boost myself one more time to get on track. There we go. So we got that one, we got that one. Missed that one even though we went through it. Sometimes the, uh, yeah, the tripwires don't activate as you saw there. But there's nothing you can really do about that. There we go. Okay. So there we go. We hit, uh, I think, the majority of them. I think two of them didn't activate. So there's 15, and I, I'm guessing we probably got about seven or eight. You can see the fish making their way down here. It takes a little bit of time for them to all gather up. Let me just get back into the normal mode. But, um, yeah, that was, the, uh, that was the route there. And you can see, you know, the ones we, the ones we made are lit up. At least they should all be. Yeah, that one's lit up. That's this one's lit up. So we hit those. But yeah, that that part where you go down quickly is is quite quite difficult, I have to say. <laughs> but let's just see what we got here. So we got 10. So that's our score. Our score is 10, although I think we went through I think we went through 12 out of 15. I think two of them didn't uh didn't activate properly, but yeah, not bad. Not bad. So we got 10 out of 15 there for our score for that one. So that's basically how it's going to work. And then we'll also add some other redstone stuff uh, for like uh, like a timer maybe and things like that. I also want to make a timer up there eventually. Um, but yeah, I'm glad we got this this Elytra course, this first route done because it takes a crazy amount of time to do that to get all the water streams down for each and every one of these these uh, these modules here. Let me go ahead and just dump off some of this fish here, dump this off, and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the tunnel in the nether now. Uh, the tunnel out to this this nether portal, basically. Uh, because, yeah, I want to uh, get that done, and then uh, next episode we'll start to work on the redstone out here um, so that we can have, you know, like fireworks when we when we end, end, and then, you know, a timer, timer up there with a countdown, stuff like that. So let me gather up some resources for the tunnel in the nether, and I'll be back. Alright, guys, so I think we're ready to head to the nether now. we got a bunch of supplies here to make our our tunnel and we actually started this tunnel on a live stream uh, a few weeks back before my surgery started 
Um, so some of you guys already know what the design is going to be, but I'm going to show those of you who weren't at the stream. Um, by the way, you can follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash cubfan135. There we go. Okay, everything looking good here. Very nice, very nice. All right, cool. Um, let's go ahead and go down to the treasure room. Need to add some more treasure to this treasure room, I think. It's been a while since we've added some, so we might do that next time. But there we go, into the treasure room. Um, so yeah, this is it right here, and then we're going to have a tunnel. The tunnel is going to be through the secret entrance over here. Whoops. Briefly gain the power of flight right there. So we'll open this up. The tunnel's going to be right here. And you can see we've already sort of started this a little bit. Um, I just have to dig out some of this. And we're going to place down right here some red nether brick like this. And the same thing on the outside over here, I believe. Some additional red nether brick right along here. Very good. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, let me show you uh, what the pattern is going to be for this thing. So, basically, it's going to have we're going to have three blocks uh, up like this of cracked stone brick, and then that's going to come over like so. If I can get this off, there we go. It's going to come over like this. There we go. And then down on this side right here. Just like that. There we go. And then from here we're going to have some sandstone stairs. There and there. Same thing on this side. So we're just going to copy it on this side. And we'll need some magma blocks right here. So we'll need three magma blocks up like that. And we'll have some orange glass like this, except I don't want that to be there. I want this to be sandstone in the back here, I believe. There we go. So sandstone, sandstone. Actually, we're going to have sandstone, I think, all the way along here. So I'll just go ahead and place that down there right now. We'll have orange glass on this side. Place that back. Magma block, let's see, on, on this side here as well. So we're going to have something like this. Like that, and then the orange glass, of course, will go right here. Orange glass here. Then we need, let's see. Well, first of all, we need to get up here, place down our sandstone stairs here. Uh, let's see, these are going to go, I think, right on top of these. Like that. Very nice. So once we got these stairs down, then we bring the regular sandstone and the the red sandstone in. So the red sandstone is going to go right over the magma blocks. So it's going to like connect those up basically. Just like that. And then the normal sandstone will go right here. So it's going to be like normal and red sandstone like that. And like this. Like that. Very nice. And then it comes in again here with the the bricks with the uh, the cracked stone bricks so it'll be up like this this sign will be up like that and then three across like that so that's gonna be sort of our pattern right there so we'll have again just the, the stairs here stairs on this side then the glass I'm actually gonna go ahead and put the glass here as well so there's no weird border or anything and we need the magma magma blocks right here. Almost called it magma cubes. Glass, and so on and so forth. So that is the pattern right there. I think it'll make a cool pattern. Uh, I might not have enough magma blocks, though, but we'll have to see. Uh, maybe we can get, you know, most of the way down here before we run out. Um, but, yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and continue on this pattern here and see how it looks. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at our tunnel here through the nether. We'll just go ahead and open it via the secret button back there. And here we go. So yeah, looks pretty good. I like the contrast of the red nether brick with the the orange of the uh, the red sandstone here. Uh, and the magma blocks as well. But yeah, it looks pretty pretty nice actually, pretty nice. Um, so yeah, that is the, the whole tunnel done now. And so this leads us from our, our nether castle and all the way over to this portal here, which leads to our elytra course. Uh, without having to be exposed to ghasts and magma cubes and zombie pigmen and things like that. 
So yeah, pretty neat, pretty neat. You can also see out, uh, which was pretty cool. You can see the, the nether over here, which is nice. And I also went with some red nether, uh, not red nether brick, um, nether wart blocks behind here, which is what gives the portal its reddish hue. So yeah, you can see those right there. And then this just leads us back out to our elytra course, hopefully. Yep, our elytra course right here. Very nice. So yeah, there's the comet, and the elytra course itself is just out here. Nice. All right, cool. So guys, I think that's going to be all for me today. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Cub. Goodbye.